Hi there. Well, I started running years ago um, when I was... I, I've been running all my life, really. But competition... Uh, that was... even in school, I used to run. started off at school running 100, meet, 100 yards, 100 yards, and then 200 yards. I even did 110 yards hurdles. That was probably 1960, 1960s. And then um, I left school uh, and then I started cycling, only club cycling. And, and uh, I, I did quite well on the cycling. And um, I cycled for, for a club called Clevedon Cycling Club. And then I started playing football at the age of about 20. Uh, I played football at school, but then I started playing football um, from from uh, from about twenty. One of the guys asked me when I go and play for their team, and, and I started playing football. Uh, but in the meantime, I I started to run sprints for for Bristol Athletic, but that was uh, two hundred and four hundred, uh, and and I, I was quite quick. I could could run. Uh, 11 200 meters, so I was quite quick over 100 meters. Just and for football, it was quick. It was, it was quick. So um, I then ended up playing football for 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 some time, and then I went to Africa when I was 1977. Uh, when I was uh, 28, and then. In Africa, uh, I started playing football there for a uh, first division side uh, for the mine, which is a national national side. But uh, I wasn't great. I just used to run around all over the place, and it really got me fit. But yeah, I used to get a game because I could I could run everywhere and get in everybody's way, really. But I played in front of some, you know, I know it's showing off a bit, but I played in front of some big crowds, which I used to have to pay to play in, in, in England. Yeah? But over there, I, I, I used to get paid a couple of, a couple of uh, quatre to, but it was, you know, it was nonsense really for me to be playing at that, that standard. It just, anyway, so when I came back to England, uh, I started playing football again, but I was always running. Right from the start, I'd run for miles without really competition, apart from 100, 200, 400 for, for Bristol and, and when I was a kid. It, but when I came back, I'd uh, Cleveland Athletic had started running, started a club. Uh, they, went, they started a club back in 77, I think, when I left. When I came back, the club was going. So I thought, you know, I wouldn't mind running for them. But in the meantime, I was, I was drinking a little bit in those days, like we all do. And then uh, one of the girls, in fact they had uh, three sisters, and I went uh, with them back to their house. And their dad was there, who was the chairman of Cleveland Athletic, and he said to me, uh, you, you know, that alley runs and all that, and I was sort of showing off, saying oh, I can, I can run. I run, you know, three or four times a week, and I, I train for football and I play for football. And he was an old guy, probably of about forty-five then, and I'd said I'd take him on, and they had a race there called the Boston Day Railways. I said I'd take him on, so he said, uh, okay then, you know, put your money where your mouth is, turn up. Uh, he gave me a free entry into the into the race, Boxing Day Road race, and um, so I did the race, and he absolutely hammered me. You know? They said there was this guy, 45 years old, and I was I could have sprinted him, but I couldn't get close to him. So anyway, he said to me, "You did all right, but now I must go training with the club." And so I did. I started training with the club, and then I I ran um, cross country for the club and, and I think my first race in the Gwent League I must have finished about 180th or something 
and then and then I, I just got a little bit better, a bit better, a bit better. Then I did a, 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 a my first ten mile road race, which I ran about fifty six minutes, which um, was not a bad time. I mean that was that was pretty good time, and uh, for what I was, and then um, so then I went, I um, I applied for a job um, uh, to go to South Africa. Because I couldn't handle staying in Britain anymore, it was. I just thought it was time I went and, and went back to Africa. I enjoyed it so much, so I thought I'd go. I'm going to apply to go back there. And meanwhile, I'd, I'd met Vicky, and Vicky, you know, that's my wife, and she said also that she would go back. You know, she would come to Africa with me. So we applied, and she ended up getting a work permit and um, and a job, and uh, I. Uh, I ended up getting a job at the same place for Eskom, which was an electricity company. Anyway, we go there and we um, settle in. They, they set us into a place and that. And then I started working, and then I realised how mad they were over on running. You know, they were completely bonkers compared to Britain at that time with the ultra distance running. And then that we went there probably in the April. And May, June, they got a big race called the Comrades, and we only had a radio uh, in this flat. And uh, so, what's going on here with this this race? You know, and uh, I realised it was it, ended, it was fifty six miles. So I'd um, we listened to this to this race, and there was a guy called um, Mazakili who was out front, and everyone saying he's going to blow, he's going to go out too fast. And then, then um, I'm not sure. I think Alan Robb come, come second in that one. Anyway, uh, he was a guy I later met a couple of months later, and he was like my hero, really, Alan. You know. And then, and then, um, then the guy came to visit me. He was from the same company. He he um, he was in charge of the apprentices, and. Um, he said to me, "I must, I must um, go and train with him." So this was on the mine dumps. So at night time, I used to go and train with him on the mine dumps. But it was so hard that I used to hide from him because he used to. Um, he, he must have been about fifty then, fifty-four. But he'd, he'd won a couple of veteran world championships in, in uh, the very first ones. I think it was in. Scandinavia, somewhere, and it was Sweden. I think it was in Sweden the first one. And um, but he was he was he was quite a good runner, well, very good. And um, but an old guy, he looked like a skeleton. And um, anyway, he, he I used to go down on the mine dumps, which was uh, uh, in in Rocheville, in, in Germiston, South Africa. So I go on the mine dumps, and I'd be watching him. And I'd see him come down, and then I'd try and hide because he used to run. It used to run. It was too fast for me. So, but then he knew all the ways around the mine dumps, and he used to catch me coming back down over a hill, and um, and take me on again. So anyway, he got me better and better. And then he used to, then because I lived on 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 the campus on on the actual uh, race on on the race on the actual um, where I worked. He used to take me to the races, and uh, and I just got better, you know. I got better. Eventually, I started beating him, which was, you know, I mean, there he was, fifty over fifty year you know, old guy. There was me. My goal was to beat him. You know, it was ridiculous, really. So I ended up beating him, and then he said I must do a marathon. So he they had this marathon called the Pony Marathon. It was from. Uh, the outside of Germiston to the outside of Pretoria. It, 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 they, had, they, had, they had got a big race there which I've done you know, after that. But it was only it was that was only a marathon. So my first marathon he came in second with me. So uh, he's running along with a bucket of water and a sponge and that and he's telling me how I must run it but like all novices don't take any notice. So I'm running, I'm feeling good, you know. So it, 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 
about 10 miles or before 10 miles, she said, I'm going too fast. And then a bit further on, he says, you're going too fast. And I didn't take any notice of him, really. I felt good. I thought, what does this, this guy know? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of 30, 31 years old and there he is, 50, I don't What does he, you know, meanwhile I didn't respect. Like now I coach, so I know, you know, I know what I felt about him and how some people feel about me when I'm coaching them. And I try and get them, convince them that I, you know, I do know what I'm, I'm talking about here. So, so with that, I'm running along at about halfway, or just after halfway, I was way over my head, and, um, and I started to slow down a bit. So he came up to me, in a real hard case, and he said, Joe Mr. Callis, we don't stop, you know. I'm not having you stopping. I want you to carry on the whole, in the, the whole, the whole race. You know, we don't stop, no matter what, we don't stop. So I started getting slower and slower, well, I thought I was, but I probably wasn't. I was, you know, just hurt a bit more, you know, just hurt. And he kept on, like, bloody shouting at me and everything. And, uh, and I thought, this is meant to be fun. And it, it wasn't so much. So I got about 20 miles and it really started hurting. And then, but he, he kept on coming up. Every time I started to slow up, he kept on appearing somewhere. And in those days, you, you could second people on the side of the road. You could drive your car. Get out, get out. There wasn't probably so many people, maybe a couple of hundred people. And then we got, I got under this bridge, and I thought I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop under this bridge because you can't get to me. This guy can't get to me. So I stopped under this bridge, and then behind me came a guy called George Roberts, who was, uh, he must have been 43 then, 44. And uh, he said to me, Come on, Callies, don't, don't stop, you know. Get your finger out, I'm going to run with you to the finish. It's maybe about 20 miles from that, 21 miles. And he was going for a PB then. He was on for a PB, this guy was. And, and um, so he, he kept, you know, got me out of underneath the bridge and then I come out and Gazorki was waiting the other side. And with that, he, he, was, he went up, got a bit upset with me because he knew I'd stopped under the bridge. And um, he chucked a whole bucket of water over me. Whole bucket he chucked over me, and uh, and he woke me up a bit, and he was shouting and boiling, and he said, Look, "This is what happens when you go out too hard, you know. You will learn from this. You you will learn. If you stop now and give up, you know, you've learned nothing. All you've learned is you've given in." So I kept going to the finish, and George was running with me, bless him, and um, and he got me to the finish, and I finished two hours forty two, which was I realised now it was a good time for a first first marathon and these guys were um, they were over the moon and now I ran 2.42 for my first marathon and, um, and George he probably could have got maybe 2.38, 2.35, 2.36 you know six minute mile in which would have been a PB for him but he actually waited and pulled me along and I thought you know I remembered all that so ever since then I've helped other people which um, for me, it's you know you learn from if if guys like that can help you along, uh, then you learn. Listen, you can help other people. You know that's when I really started thinking. Hey, I I can run a bit better, but I've learned a lesson from that about hurting, about hanging in, about listening because I didn't listen. I didn't listen to her. She told me I was going too fast, and I, and I carried on. And, and to discipline myself. So he said, look, and, I, and he said, what, what's your goals? And I said, I'd love to run 2.30. You know, he said, is that out of the question? And then I told him about a guy in, in, in Clevedon who wanted to get into 2.30 and he could never make it. And he said to me, you're easy getting to 2.30. And if you've had that for your first marathon, you can get into 2.30. So he had more belief in myself than I did. So I thought, yeah, he's just trying to motivate me, yeah, motivate me to, you know, he's, this guy's, you know, he's a good coach, but he's just trying to motivate me, you know, to do it. And um, anyway, so I got more into this running, and then George, you know, they, they're all willing to help, you know, all, you know, those guys out there, those auto distances and those marathoners, they're not out to beat you, they're out, obviously in the races they are, but they're, they're out to help you, you know, they're out, instead of 
trying to hammer you and they're out to help you, to encourage you to, to run better. You know? So then I started running with a group and I met Alan Robb who became who was a hero of mine before I'd even met him. Then I started meeting some of the, the top guys in, in the club, like Wally Hayward who was who, who, who held the world 100 kilometer record, 24 hour record, another guy called Jackie Meckler who was an icon as well and and I started meeting all these people who, who you never you, you probably never meet the same people in England of that of that level because you know I don't know but over there they seem to be a little bit more accessible so and then then you could learn off them so I used to sit down with Wally Hayward and, uh, and Meckler and they took interest also in me and I could sit down with them for hours I used to talk and talk and talk about running and get information off of them and and uh, they used to bring me little little bits of paper with you know things I could do to help my running not too complicated not these days have got a bit too complicated on it you know I coach now so uh, I try not to get too complicated but you read I read a lot of books almost every day and reading running books and magazines but so people get too complicated on it and it's meant to be just go out there and run it's Alan Robb said to me Hey, don't get too carried away with it. Just go out and run, uh, run the damn thing. And, and Alan Robb was a um, he, he he had twelve gold medals in combat, and he was a two two twenty one marathoner, uh, and he won the combat four times, come second a few times. And I can remember him once in, in combat, he finished, and uh, and I said to him, Alan, I reckon you could have made another place up there and uh, he said to me uh, he said to me well I, uh, he was must have been about 30 finished seventh and, and I said you could have you could have finished sixth in that or, or, or fifth you know you the guy's only just in front so why did you do that he said well, I've never I haven't got a medal I haven't got a gold medal for to finish I never finished seventh before you know brilliant absolutely but he wasn't showing off his that's the way he was you know, I'd, I'd show off if I was, you know, did as much as what he'd done. So anyway, so from there, uh, I started meeting these guys, learning off of them, and then they encouraged me to do some ultras. And then my next race was in uh, also in Johannesburg, Mitch Marathon, and um, that was crazy because we're running down the road, and I'm thinking, every, in those days, you're thinking, well, every time you go out, you're going to get a PB. You know, you're going to get a personal best. So, but yeah, now I, the guys are coach, I'm trying to hold them back a little bit and not to tell them you're going to get a PB every time you go out because you're not. But in those days, I thought, yeah, I can. You know, I'm going to go for another PB instead of recovering and resting and everything. So we did. The, I did this next marathon, and we're running down the road, and I know those days are quite well spaced out, and um, and then I realised. Yeah, I've, I've lost the guy in front of me and then I've seen somebody coming back and then I've seen somebody else coming out of another turning and, and everyone had gone the wrong way it was just like a it was just like uh, watching a bloody uh, one of these um, uh, Peter Sellers uh, 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 comedy act so so we um, so I ran to the finish I, I, I was quite well up in the finish because people had gone the wrong way and uh, and I had a really good time but it was it was not it was under my PP but you couldn't count it because every, I, I must have ran short everyone had gone the wrong way so that was a you know you just couldn't count that that was my second one which was a bit of a disaster anyway but after that marathon and, and I spoke to Hayward and, and Meckler um, and, and uh, Rob really started training a, a, a lot more putting in in Kazorki I told me how many miles I had to be running and, and, and I was not running hardly anything I was 40 50 miles a week and they said I had to up it to about 80 and um, they thought I could do it and that was a big big jump so so we ended up I ended up doing a little bit more, not too much, because other people were saying you can't progress, which is true. You, you know, I've learned over you, know, you 
years. You, know, you can't all of a sudden jump from from 50, 40, 50 miles a week to 80. And it's a double. So you have to progress slowly, which I did. I, I, I started adding a, a few more on. And then they started talking I should be running Conway's, which is a big jump from one marathon to, to double marathon. So they uh, suggested now that I go down with the with Germiston Callies and run uh, the Burgerville Marathon, which was uh, 53 kilometres. So I, I go down there and, and we, we camp. Uh, I, I go down with a group of people from Callies and we camp. And we used to go away to these places and, and have great times. You know, spend the whole weekend running and training. And, and having barbecues or pies, drinking a few beers, or well, quite a few beers really, and then, then uh, and really enjoying ourselves. It was like, to me, it was, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't ask for anything better really. The sunshine and, and the training, the people were serious about the training, but they also enjoyed, um, they also enjoyed, uh, they also enjoyed having a few beers and, and eating their you know, eating their meat and that. Which a lot of people don't don't like eating eating meat if they're if they're runners. But anyway, keep it simple. So these guys were always telling me keep it simple, eat what you want, uh, just get on with it and, and and go out and run. Just go and run. So anyway we go down to run to Burgville. So I'm down there and, and uh, we're running down the road, I'll never forget this, we're running down, in fact a lot, a lot of things I'll never ever forget, but in fact most of the running I'll never forget, so I can't keep saying I'll never forget. So anyway, I'm running down the road, and, and I'm running down the road, because I, I started training with, with Rob and a few of the other guys who, who I looked up to, you know, I think well, I can stay with them in training, so I, you know, I shouldn't, shouldn't be that far behind them in a race, but it did make a bit of difference when you think of tactics and those guys are experienced. So I'm, I'm running down the road and, and I feel quite comfortable running with a with with lead group of about 25 people. Now there's probably about a thousand people in this race, or 800, yeah, about 800 to a thousand. Anyway, running down the road and, uh, and, and somebody shouts from behind us, hey! We've gone the wrong way. You've gone the wrong way. So there's a group of us, about 25. I'm sat in that group. And everyone's looking behind. And someone shouts, Alan, Rob is in the lead group. And someone says to Alan, you know, you ran this. He's won this about five times. Alan, are we going the wrong way? He says, I think we are. It's like, well, what are we doing? And we're carrying on running. So he said, and then he says, I'm sure we're going the wrong way. Now he's leading the group down the road. And he said, yeah, we're definitely going the wrong way. So, so well, we better stop then. So we stop, the whole group of us, 25. And we all split up. I think, well, Alan knows his way around here. I found out afterwards. He said, even though he's won it five times, he hasn't got a clue what he's doing. So I'm following Alan now. So everyone's disappeared up the road, turned and gone back. I follow Alan straight through this farmyard, straight over a fence, and we managed to catch the other, the other guys at the, the back of the, the race. So now we've gone from the front of the race to the back of the race. I'm jumping over a fence following Alan, and, and then the guys, bless them all, you know, the, 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 the people further back in the middle and further back in the field, they realise what we've, what we've happened, because everyone's laughing now. And this was after only about, not even, three kilometres we've gone the wrong way so so we get back onto the track and back onto the road after going through this farmyard and we're at the back of the field and and the field opens up for us you know they they open up and and so they let us go all right the way th through from, from the back to the front they, they open up and let us through and shout at us and laugh at us and wish us the best you know you say oh, have a good journey and have a good race so they, they let us get through and then the race starts again. Now the group then, but it's not 25 at the front now or 30 people, it's got right down to probably, I don't know, 10, 10 people at the front. 
I'm at the front now, everyone, the adrenaline is flying now because I'm all wound up, you know. So I, my adrenaline is flying as well. So everyone's flying down the road there. So I'm at the front with with Alan and a guy called Christopher um, McKeezy, the guy who, 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 I, who with the Conways, uh, 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 Charlie Banton, um, who am I supposed to say? Anyway, there's. Anyway, I can't remember all their names because I was only I wasn't even there for a year yet. I was, this was still, yeah, this was still, um, yeah, the bird row was before Conway. So, so anyway, so I'm running down the road, and uh, and the next thing is we're at the front, and uh, and we must have got twenty miles, and then we get to the marathon mark, which is. I think it's near this hill called Charge Hill. And we get to the marathon mark, and I look at my watch, and I think, we're just going through your 2.32. I thought, that's, I've done a PB on a marathon, and gone the wrong way, 2.32, and, and I don't feel too bad, and we've got, you know, we've got, it's only 42 Ks, and then we've got to get, we've got to do 50, 53 Ks. So I'm still following Alan, now we're, that time I'm about probably about six, six, seventh, but still in, in following Alan, you know, I'm using him, using his brains. So we go up over Charles Hill and I, I start dumping Alan, and I realise that you know people are saying, well, don't don't get too far in front of Alan because he's he's good down there running anyway. And I think, well, so I I ease off and I run up the hill with Alan, and then and one of the guys stopped. Charlie, uh, Charlie Bantam stops, starts taking his shoes off, and Alan says to me, you know, that's it now. I said, where's, where's your car? And he said, no, he's taking his shoes off, and he'll be past us in a minute. So this guy's renowned for taking, running barefoot. So, get to the top of the hill, and Charlie's come past us. And I must have been about fourth or fifth here. And next thing is Alan takes off down this hill. Gee, I couldn't believe how fast he was running down this hill. And I was looking at my watch, and I must have been doing 3.10 a K going down this hill, practically sprinting. I never ran that fast, that, that far into a marathon. Well, I, obviously not, because it was my first all trip, but and a PB on a marathon. So I, was, I, I got myself in really good condition. So we're going down over this hill, and, and Alan's just pulling away. I couldn't believe how fast he was running down this hill. So I had to let him go. Why? He just went, and then uh, uh, Charlie was in front now, and then I said, a guy called Bernard Butterlazy, Bernard Butterlazy. So he he was he was next, and then there was Alan, and then there was me. So I was fourth now, going down over this hill, and and uh, anyway, we go to the finish, and, and that's where it stayed. It, 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 that it, so that was my first ultra. And and uh, and I got uh, two thirty two marathon, which is unbelievable for me to get two thirty two in an ultra, and and carry on to the finish. And I think I finished that. Um, I think it was three hours nine minutes, no, three hours thirteen minutes or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Three hours thirteen or three hours twelve. I don't know. I'm not sure. But it was it was over three hours for that. But. Then from then I got got a prize, my first prize, and I got some money for it. I thought, blimey, you know, this is really. I was enjoy obviously I enjoyed it, but my legs were so sore I could I could hardly walk afterwards. When I stopped, I could hardly walk, and once again I had a lot of praise, and people were my ego was getting there. I started to think, bloody hell, you know, this isn't bad. This, you know, I'm not as I'm not not as bad as I thought I was, you know, I'm not. Just a, a runner now. I can I can race. So then, then I then they said I better get on the track and start running some track races, and then eight uh, k time trials, and then uh, my wife Vicky start uh, organised. We started bringing the eight k time trial back to Germiston, which is every Wednesday we used to have a time trial, and my time trial started coming down from twenty seven minutes to 25 minutes and then 
Now this was in within probably within a year, and then and then uh, I can't remember all all the races I, I done, but I can remember those. But I was racing a lot of ten k uh, track races, anything from from um, from fifteen hundred to uh, up to um, I was running like four ten for fifteen hundred. I was running like 33 minutes for 10 then, 10 k's, uh, and then and then uh, I can't remember. I can't remember all the uh, all the races, but I know my second, my probably my fourth, fifth marathon uh, standard. Uh, I was running around about 2:38, but that that was in in altitude, and then I got I got. Yeah, we were going to go down and run the Savages Marathon, that was it, the Savages Marathon. And, uh, and we had a team to go down, and I had a, a, a Volkswagen camper, and we were all going to go down in this camper. And so, and then on the Friday, I got a phone call at work saying, do I want to go to, um, to Cape Town and run a race? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going down with the guys to run in... Um, in Durban to run a marathon, the Savages Marathon. And, uh, and then they said, um, well look, you have the airfare paid. Someone has pulled out a book called uh, um, uh, Derek, Derek, Derek Marx has pulled out. And, and uh, they want a team, a, a team from Germany, uh, from uh, Transvaal. And uh, they knew I was, I was up for a marathon. And uh, would I go down with the team and, and instead of doing that math and go down to run in, um, in Cape Town. So I phoned up the other guys and they said, no, I must go for it. You know, forget about them, they'll go down, they'll drive down and, and they'll run their race and I must go and run that to get picked to run for Transvaal and it was quite an honour, so I must, let's go. That, that's how those guys were. Now, I, I was ruining their team because I was, you know, I wasn't going to go. But so they encouraged me, I must go. So I went down there and a guy called Will Hugo, who, um, anyway, that's another story where Hugo. So I, I went down and I, I met him, he just moved to Cape Town. So he picked me up at the airport, took me to the team, because the team had already gone down, uh, which was in Stellenbosch. We stayed in, um, in the White Lands there, which VIP treatment and, and uh, in it was absolutely magic. I never had treatment like that. And uh, stayed in the hotel um, with, with the team. And then the next and, and the next day uh, we went. Uh, but I was going to run on the Sunday, so this was on the Saturday. So it was a day before. But the day before that, on the Thursday, I'd run my my best um, eight k's, which was so that was on the Thursday. I ran my best eight k's time trial altitude. I ran. Uh, 25.11, which was my best time up until then, and that was in, that was in altitude to Mister. So that's why I think I got asked to go down. But that, but that was only a, two days later to go and run in a marathon now. So it wasn't much recovery. But I'm, I never used to think about it. Nobody did over there. They just used to go for it. So I go down there, and then uh, it, they had it. A good field there, but I didn't really know all of them. There was uh, Bonzet, Everett Bonzet, who actually ended up winning the race. There was the, the Donald Twi uh, Brothers, um, Jose Charlie, who got quite a few golds and comrades. Um, let me think. A anyway, it was a, it was a good it was a good a de um, another guy from my club, uh, um, Kevin Shaw. That was it. There was one team went to uh, the Savages, which would have been our team, which was, wasn't such a good team as. Um, this is all from one club, mine. Uh, not not Transvaal team, but but the uh, club I ran for. So there was three of us going down to the Savages, and there was some of them who were picked for the Transvaal team, and we went down to run. It was Kevin Shaw, uh, uh, Steve Harrison, and myself. Who, who ran, who, who was from the club, but 
from Transvaal, there was uh, Jose Charlie. Anyway, there, there was a big Transvaal site. So anyway, we go down there, I'm waffling now. So we go down there and we run, uh, we run the, the Stellenbosch Marathon. So I'm down there and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Like, it was an out and back course. So I'm, I, I was a bit better than I was, obviously was you know, from the uh, Bergfell Marathon, uh, Orchard. But this is a standard 26 a mile. Uh, so I'm running now uh, with the guys, and I was, I was now I've been helped by a bloke called John Cargan, who had run many comrades, but he also coached quite a few guys, uh, comrades guys. So we'd also got goals in comrades. That's the first ten. So anyway, I'm I'm going out with these guys, not with the leaders. And Kevin Shaw led the race, and. Uh, I ran a pace I could handle. I knew if I could run eight k's in altitude and 25, 11, or something like that, uh, which it was. I, I know I can run 27 minutes every eight k's, but that's what I was told as well. You know, I should be able to run 27, and I was putting in the long runs then of before then probably over over three hours, three and a half hour runs. So I go out and uh, I and I turn. I turned around this and had this barrel in the middle of this road. So I turned and I, 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 by that time I've just about caught, well, I haven't caught them yet, but I see them because as we're going down to the, uh, to the barrel, I see them coming back. Uh, two of the guys, um, one of the guys from my club was just in front and the other one, Kevin Shaw, was actually leading it at one time, but he wasn't leading it there. So I, I, I see them coming coming back when I'm still going down to turn around. I turned, it's it, it, about 71 minutes, something like that, 71 minutes. So I turn and come back, and now I can remember this race because this was my PB, you know, and it's after about five marathons, this was my PB. So and I never got any better than that. So I, I ran, ran, ran the bow and came back, and, and uh, I caught Steve Harrison, and I've never felt so good. You know, it's like they say you have a purple patch, they call it in running, a purple patch. You know, that's like a buzzword, I suppose. A purple patch. I've really felt on top of the world. And um, as I'm coming back, I catch him. And at that sort of pace, when you're fit, you can still talk. People say, how can you talk? You know, you're, not, you're not anaerobic. You, know, you, you can talk. It's only your legs start getting sore. So, but I felt great. And, and, and we even start singing, which is ridiculous, you know. And then there's a camera. The camera there was in the back of the um, uh, back of the, one of the cameras was in the back of this vehicle, and we start singing, you know, it's really showing off, singing and shouting. And then we go back down over into Stellenbosch, and I've left Steve Harrison now, and uh, and I catch Kevin Shaw, who who blown it. He, he was a two twelve marathoner, and he was going to try and get selected for Ireland uh, for um, the Olympic Games. So he'd gone for it and, uh, and I, anyway I caught him and I thought I'm catching some of these guys who are, who are really, I, look, I, look, I used to look upon as you know, some of these guys are brilliant. You know, I, I, but then you realise you're not as bad as, as what you're thinking. You know? you're, you're not obviously that good, but you're not as bad as you. As so this you this guy, Kevin Shaw, who was two twelve marathon, and I caught him, and he started shouting at me. He looked at his watch and he said, "Stevie, you can get a sub two twenty." And um, and I'm thinking, blimey, a sub two twenty. And 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 we, we probably had about. 9Ks to go, something like that, 9 k So he said to me, come on, you can do it. You know? and, and he said, he, his race is ran, so he's going to try and get my pace back up. He's going to try and help me, even though he was blown. But this, this guy was a class act, someone who, who was uh, a springbok athlete, good cross-country runner, sub four minute mile, uh, no, I think he just ran over four minutes. He was... Um, he held the African record for an hour on, on the on the track. I, I think he ran um, thirteen miles, and and um, and uh, thirteen miles about three hundred seventy-five yards. 
a few years before on the track for an hour. At that time we had the African record for, and, then, and I thought I just caught this guy. And and um, but he was a humble guy, really. And those those guys will will be there. They help you. So I caught him, and he said, "I'm going to pace you for the next for as far as I can." So I'm going to get the pace up. And um, so he paced me probably for about another three k's. And then he said, I, "I can't do anymore." He said, "I must go, go, go." There's lots of people in front I can overtake. So I started catching people in front, and um, people I never thought, I, I used to see them on the telly and that, some people I never thought I could catch, or be anywhere near. So I caught, I caught the Donalds, or one of the Donalds, uh, and um, anyway, I can't, I can't think of all the other guys I caught, but I did catch another, about another three guys. And then I come onto the track, I finished it at uh, Kutzenburg, come onto the track, and uh, and the other Donald brother, there was two Donalds, I caught the other Donald brother right on the track. And I passed him on the track and I, fi and I finished in uh, 2 hours 20 and 21 seconds. But I ran the last 8 k's in, in close to 25 minutes, about 25.10, which was close to my PB for 8 k's. And how the hell I did that, I don't know. But the encouragement that I got from Kevin you know, when someone like that encourages you to that you can do it, then you believe you can do it, and and that's also something I remember <laughs> that whatever uh, whatever you are, you know, you're not that you, you you might be pretty good, you might think you're pretty good, but there's always someone out there who can give you a you know, give you a run for your money. But what I learned was was you've got to help other people. You know, you've got to. If Kevin of that standard could help someone like me, I thought, well, I can also help people. You know, I, when I run past people, I must try and encourage them. I think that's why I ended up coaching because uh, when I realised that this running or, or or a lot of sports, it is about helping the next generation up and helping other people, not just about grinding everybody into the ground. And obviously, when when you go out there and race. You try and beat everybody, but if your race is run, there's no reason why you can't help other people, like Kevin did to me. So I've learned a lot out of, out of helping other people, encouraging other people. So anyway, that was my my um, my um, my PB, which I never I never got better on that. I ran plenty of marathons, probably ran twenty altogether under two thirty. I've had 221s, 222s, 223, 4, 5s, but I never got under 220. Anyway, um, uh, now I was, I was supposed to be running Conway's. My first Conway's was, was before that race, before the 220, before the Stellenbosch race. And, and the Stellenbosch race was in September. And I'd ran uh, my first comrades, which was in um, uh, 80, 82, my first comrades, I went to South Africa 81, and then uh, my first comrades was 82, the year after. And I'd ran, uh, uh, these guys were telling me how I should run it, and, and, and I remember George Roberts, who, the guy who helped me with my first 242, he said I must run with him on the on on the comrades. So I ran with him. So I, I went with him up to about 60 k's or 55 k's, and then he said to me, "I must, uh, if I felt like it, carry on, you know, and then maybe I can get under under seven hours because seven and a half hours is is a is a um, silver medal in those days. I think it still is. Yeah, and that was 82. So he says. I must run with him, and, and if he thinks that, I've, that I'm looking good, I must carry on. So I I got a, I ran with him, and then he said, "No, you're looking good. Just carry on, but don't go out too fast." But I didn't. I know. Once he he let me go, that was it. I just went too fast, and then in about 65, 70 k's on the down run, um, I started really getting 
I'm going on, sugar level had dropped. Uh, I started getting cold, started shivering. I, it was raining that day, it was, it was a little bit cold for South Africa, but I, I was wet through because I kept on chucking all this water all over myself because I was soaking wet. And um, so I started shivering and then I was hungry and I remember stopping at, at uh, the, people got barbecues all the way along in the comrades, barbecues and it's a real fun day because everyone's got a day off. So I get there and, uh, and I ask this, this woman on the side who's got all these bread rolls, I don't, I don't know whether they're doing it for a barbecue for other people, but I said, can I have a bread roll? And she said, yes. So can I sit down? She said, yes. So I sat down and I ended up having five bread rolls, you know, just kept on eating these things. And then somebody came over and said, no, I think you better get going. So they pulled me up and I start running again, but I struggled to the finish. And I kept on hearing Gazorka's, you know, words in my head. He wasn't there, but I could hear it. You know, no can stop, you know, you've got to keep going. That's what this comrades is about. And um, so I keep running and I finish. And people who are who, um, in, in the club, who was, who was, I would beat them over 10 k's or half a marathon at that time. Um, they were just passing me and trying to encourage me, but they were also trying to go to get a silver medal. And I ended up not getting a silver medal, I ended up running a 7.42, which was, I should have had, if I'd listened to George and not gone for it, I should have had about a 7.20 or, or even quicker. George ended up running 7.15. So I didn't see him on the road eating my bread rolls and he didn't see me. He must have passed me while I sat down there somewhere. So that, that was that was my first comrades and that was before I'd ran the 2.20 mouth. And then... Uh, I learned a lot on that day to have a bit more respect for the distance and a bit more respect for the older people who'd, who'd ran these races and was giving me advice, which I did take. You know. I took until he let me go and then I forgot all what, what these guys, older guys told me, Wally Haywood, Meckler, all these guys told me that, you know, <clears throat> that I was capable of getting seven hours on my first comrades and then maybe I could go on from there but it was a bit of a disaster but it was great to finish I had tears in my eyes to finish the first orchard like that the comrades was I mean there's so many people there thousands of people there down in the streets and it was a fantastic experience something which as a runner you know everybody should experience I think you know an orchard like that and um, the only thing near to here, they had the London appointment, but that was nowhere near uh, the publicity as what you get there. And the, the, you know, the old, it's a bank holiday. Anyway, so I finished that. Uh, I got myself back together again. I started running, and then I, I, because of all the distance I'd had in my legs, I ended up running that 220 marathon. And then, then I started not improving. My, my friend, like I said, 221s, 222s, I couldn't get under, I tried all sorts, going through halfway faster, like 68, but I, I used to blow to a 222, or going slower, you know, 71s, and I could never get that again, but but then I was into ultra distance marathons, so, marathons. so then when I used to go away with the club, my goal was to get in the first 10 of, of a lot of, of most of the of uh, the orchards in in in, in, the, in the country, which was the uh, the Bergville, the the Mount, uh, Harry Smith Mountain Race, uh, Harry Smith no not the Mountain Race Harry Smith uh, Train Race, which wasn't an orchard that was only a thirty six, but I tried to get in the first ten of, of most of the races, and um, then I got selected to run uh, for my province to run. Um, in the SA Marathon Chance, my first SA Marathon Chance, and and the same guy who won Stellenbosch uh, had won the SA Marathon Chance uh, Evo Bonzet, and in which I come tenth in the Stellenbosch, and uh, and I come twenty third in the in the, um, the SA Marathon Champs at eighty three, 
in the in 226, but it was so windy that day, you couldn't believe it. So I went from strength to strength, really. And then, and then my second comrade was, was um, uh, I learned a lesson on my first one, and then my second one, uh, I uh, ran out a bit slower, I tried to run equal pace, and I got, um, I was a bit more intelligent in that race, I listened to what people told me, and I obeyed what they said, you know, a bit more respect for the race, and that was on the up. So on the up, I went out slower, uh, and I found out towards the end I was catching people, and in the following year I ran uh, um, 618, 618, and uh, and I finished uh, eight, no, 613, so I, I finished eight, 18th position, which was a big difference between 742 and about 700 position. So then I realised I can win this race, and then other people were thinking, you know, I I I I coach now, like I've told you, and 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 a lot of other people say think you can do better than what you can actually yourself, and that's that's what people thought I could run, maybe run a gold. So the following year, um, I on the down I ran uh, uh, six. I ran 26 position, um, also I think 6, 6.13 or, uh, yeah, 6, 6.13 or, or 6, anyway, somewhere around about that, I, I wasn't, I, 26 position, I was over 6 hours, could have been 6.10, I should know, shouldn't I, so, but I don't, and then the following year after that, I, I, I ran a lot of track races, 8Ks, I got my 8Ks down to, uh, to uh, 24.50 in altitude. So I, I stabilised a bit, but I was still running uh, my, my uh, 10Ks, I was down to like 30, 31 minutes, and uh, I was running a lot of them, 8Ks once a week, two track sessions once a week, 100 miles a week. So I was in there with those guys uh, running the same as they were, you know. So I had an equal chance now and I realised I wasn't such a bad runner after all, you know. But I still looked, I wasn't in the guise of 212s or, but 220, yeah, I was 220 to 230. Uh, I didn't think uh, I was in the 215 shape like a lot of them, a lot of my opposition, but over at Orchard, I could match them over an orchard. I was catching some of the guys who ran two thirty, uh, two thirteens, two fifteens. I could catch them over an orchard marathon. So, and then I ran uh, after twenty six position. I I ran, um, uh, which I thought I was up for. I went down and ran the Savages Marathon, and um, that that race that uh, I was out front with a guy called. Eloy Dolavira, right? Oh, I, he was an apprentice in the same company as I was, and I got to know him. And anyway, up front in the race, we were first and second, running first and second in the race. And on one of the hills, I pulled away from him, and um, and I'd actually waited till he got caught me again. But before then, I'd had, I felt like I had a, a needle or a, 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 a pen shoving up in the in the cheeks of my backside, and uh, I didn't know what it was. And it was a nerve cord, but I didn't know at the time. I just felt this pain in my backside. Obviously training too much, getting carried away. Uh, anyway, I managed, I, during the beginning of the race, I managed to, still in first and second, uh, in the beginning of the race, I managed to shake, shake it off, but it was still there, and, and, and then it went and it came back. And at the top of the hill, uh, we started running together, and then uh, there's no one going to catch us. So I said to Eloy, you carry on, you know, get a good time here, because this backside of mine is hurting now. And uh, so he waited with me, because and because there's no one going to catch us. And he said, well, you, you, know, you have to come, you know, come with me. And I said, I can't. So he pulled away, and I still managed to finish second, but I could hardly walk afterwards. But I never thought 
that much about it. I wasn't really injured much in those days. So, but it was a bit of a shock. So I thought I had to go away, you know. So a couple of couple of days I run in it out and never got paranoid about it. I just run it out. Then uh, the comrades, uh, when I when I'd ran with Villiers or Paul Horsen, uh, he he never ran um, he, he 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 never ran a goal before and he was up for a goal, positive thinker. He was up for a goal that year and he started off, he came back after about two years out, started training with me and he came back and I remember his first long run of 15 miles that he could hardly finish. And then he just kept on adding a mile on and, you know, every weekend. He'd add a bit more and a bit more until we could run like, like 60 k's, you know, like 40 miles or you know, 64 k's is 40 miles. So we're doing 40 miles. And um, he, he would, um, he would uh, um, encourage me. Then he started doing track, track uh, sessions with me. We were doing five times one, th five times one mile in under, under, um, under five minutes. And our time trials were 25 minutes. I was a little bit quicker than he was. But um, he was up for it. And then we started the race. So we went out and I felt... Jesus, pain in my backside's come again. So I only realised afterwards it was I caught a nerve and I just used to get wound up about it, wound up about races and I get nervous and the nerve, my sciatic nerve had kept caught. So I ran probably about five miles and I had to stop. I really couldn't, I wasn't going to run uh, 56 miles with that pain. So I was so disappointed, really, really so disappointed after that. I had to stop and Vicky was waiting at the top of the cliff which is probably 25 k's, 30 k's, 30 could be 20 miles, 20 miles at the top of the cliff on the upburn. She's waiting for me to give me a, one of some of the special stuff that we used to have, I used to think we used to make us run well. And uh, she's waiting and um, I didn't turn up so she was worried. So I got an ambulance, I was quite in the back of the ambulance. And the ambulance took me up to the top of the cliff. And um, I said, look, I've stuffed myself up. So I went to the finish, watched the finish. And who comes in in, in ninth position, tenth uh, position, or was it eighth position? Eighth position, Villiers Open Horseman. He comes in eighth. That made me even worse. Good for him, but I thought if Villiers could have finished eighth, I would, I would have got a goal as well because we trained together. I was the one encouraging him as well. So that was a bit of a, it was great for him, but I also realised I could have also had a goal that year. So he got a big sponsorship. I got, you know, not a bit jealous because of it, envious. Not jealous, envious, I'd say. And, uh, and I thought that, yeah, I could have also got, got there. It's just, I'd probably overdone it. Overdone, overdone the training, got too ambitious. And um, so for the whole year then, and I had people telling me I was too soft, I gave in too easy, which, you know, I didn't give in too easy, but I had all these people saying things in my head. And I thought, I'm going to train next year, and I'm going for it again next year. So the following year, 86, I went for it, and um, that year I got a gold. I was on the down run, I went uh, 5.46 and uh, Villiers didn't get a gold that year, he, he finished about 18th or 20th and I got a gold that year and that was my first and only gold and I must have been 88, I was probably 30, 38 years old then and um, so after that I'd, uh, well, um, so after that I'd, uh, I, 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 I couldn't get another 220 and um, I thought I'm 38 years old now and I, all I can think about is becoming 40 year old so there was good there was good prize money as a 40 year old but in the meantime um, they were negotiating to run a 100k race in South Africa they, were, they, were, they had 15 guys from overseas the best guys they could pick which ex-world champions, record orders, 
and they were going to pick 15 South Africans. And I was lucky enough, they, they, um, this was 1989, and the following year I didn't run. Uh, I, ran, I ran a gold 86, 87 I ran, didn't get a gold. I, I was 26, finished 26 in, in uh, 6. 6.18, 6.13 again, I ran 6.13 again, so I ran probably three times 6.13 and I realised, you know, I'd reached the top of that mountain uh, for, for comrades, I wasn't going to keep on and on and on, I wasn't an Alan Robb or, or a class act, like those guys who keep on, I, I also could run 10Ks and, and marathons, probably 10Ks quicker than, than, than a lot of them, so I'm going to as, when I turn veteran, I'm going to run as a 10Ks and shorter races where I could win some prize money. So I ended up, um, and in the meantime, they organised this 100K, 100K race. But I didn't know that, but I got invited uh, in 1989 to run it. So I got an invite in September. I was turning 39. Uh, at the age of, uh, uh, in, in 1989, so uh, they'd, um, they'd organised this race and I got picked. Got picked to run for South Africa, but they didn't give us Springbok colours then because it was still, we still weren't allowed in into international competition. So they'd picked us to run uh, a 100k race and I was one of them, one of the 15 South Africans which I was really proud to to do that and we had uh, VIP treatment, we stayed at the Lord Charles Hotel and and uh, we got ushered about seeing all these different sponsors and everything. Anyway that race started and uh, and that was that was like a, a huge huge trip for me and and uh, and I finished eleventh just outside of I lost three thousand Rand, three thousand dollars we all we all given a hundred, uh, all given a thousand dollars each, and I lost three thousand dollars for tenth place. And on the third lap, I was I was lying in in probably about third third place on the third lap. We had a figure of eight, you know, two uh, two laps out one way, two laps out another way, and uh, I was in th way over my head. I was going out with Alan Rob, who I was training with then, because it's. Up until then, it was all meant to be secret. No one was supposed to say anything. Only tell your wives because if, if the outside world got hold of who were running an 100k race, they would stop it. And uh, and these overseas guys who they paid a lot of money to come and race against us would have wouldn't have been allowed to come, or they would have been uh, um, banned from from running. So, and a few of them did get warned when they got a couple of days before. The race they got, to, they got told if they ran, they'd be banned from their own countries. That was a um, bloke called Barney Klecker, who was the American record holder, 100k record. Yanis Kuos, who was famous for um, uh, 24 hour races, um, 12 day races. They, they, uh, they, they were going to ban him, and they did ban him because he did run the race. And and a French guy, um, I forget what his name was. Anyway, there's Jean Paul Pilot there. He he ran. He was he he ran. Um, I think six thirteen for like hundred uh, k's at that time. Anyway, so we were running out, and it was it was a figure of eight on on the third on the first of the third laps. I went down the road, and. And they, this woman was stood in the in the middle of the road and sent me the wrong way. And um, next minute, as the cyclists come down the set up, because I was going down the road, couldn't believe it. These cars were almost hitting me because I was I was concentrating and I'm running down the road and I couldn't believe that these cars. I thought, what's going on here? These cars are nearly hitting me here. People were beeping, and um, but I didn't realise I'd taken the wrong route. So the guy come down and told me to go back the other way and they'd make the time up, they'd organise. I went about a kilometre the wrong way. So I got back, back on route and by the time I got back on route 
by the, the main group, which was which was Alan Rob and Fordyce, um, Biggs, um, not not Biggs, um, uh, Thomas Magawana. Uh, the main group were were in there. The, the front group was Dion Ortsausen. Uh, he he was out front and uh, Magashani, and I was I was the next one. But I went the wrong way, and uh, by the time I got back, I got back onto the group, and uh, and Alan Rob says to me, "Calm down, you know, calm down, you know." He thought I'd gone to the toilet again because I I had too much food the night before, and I kept on stopping to go to the toilet, and he thought I'd gone to the toilet again, but I hadn't. I'd gone the wrong way. So uh, I get back onto the group. It wouldn't have made any difference, man. I mean, I'm not making excuses. Uh, it wouldn't have made a, made any difference. It would have made a difference to the to the tenth place, I think, because I, lo I lost tenth place by about three minutes. So I lost I lost four minutes at least because we're doing four minute k's then by that kilometre. So it wouldn't have made any difference to the first, you know, the the runs in front. And then I come back out and I'm I'm with the group, but then the group gradually start pulling away. I can't can't stay with them. I got out too fast, and then Alan Rob stopped. And told me um, I must keep going, keep going, keep going. He's he's going to stop. And I thought Alan's stopping. That's incredible, you know, for for him to stop. But he had a bad tummy, and by then everything had gone out of my stomach because I stuff I'd eaten the night before too much, and all all gone. So I, I was worried that people were worried about me dehydrating because I had a personal second with me. He was worried about me dehydrating because I was going to the toilet all the time. So I was drinking coke and all kinds of stuff. And um, but anyway, I managed to finish, finish eleventh. And um, at that time, I was, I was uh, there was only eleven guys got finished that race, and there's only eleven people ever got under at that time. Eleven people in one race got under got under seven hours. So um, so they were willing me to finish to run. Um, seven hours, uh, to, to get under seven hours. Anyway, I finished that, and, it, and and after all that, people were worried about getting dehydrated. I was the only one who didn't go on a drip because it was up to 35 degrees that day, and even the tar was melting on the side of the road. But it, I was so happy to have finished that race and and to run with that class of people. Uh, I, was, it was, I, I felt honoured to be able to run that with you know, with all them people, uh, all those guys who were much better class athletes than I was. Anyway, so I finished that, and then I, I was 39 years old then, and I thought I'm going to really now take the next year and concentrate on trying to run as a veteran, to try and win as many races as I can. Right, when I turned 40, that was, the, that was in February, so it took me a, quite a long time to recover. I didn't go for any marathons, just trying to get faster on the track. So when I turned 40, I was determined to try and get some faster races. Faster races. So when I turned 40, uh, my first race was uh, a 15k race, which I got under, um, under 50 minutes, which I'd, I'd won, finishing the first 10. And then the next race was 25 k's, uh, which I'd run uh, uh, 1 hour 22 against Johnny Aberstadt, who was just turned 40 as well. And Aberstadt was a 2.12 marathon, a sub 4 minute mile, who I respected. But then I started to believe in myself a bit more, and I beat him. Anyway, I must have run altogether, uh, um, uh, and I ran street miles. Which, which we, we, and, and we ran on the track, Conway's Miles, because it was Conway's Gold Medalists used to get all these people, Conway's Gold Medalists together to run as a, a warm up for the main mile races. And I'd run quite a few of them. Okay, so I can't talk, um, I can't talk through every race, now when I'm a veteran, now I'm 40, you know, no, I'm not 40 now, I'm 63 this month. 
but I can't talk about every every race I ran as a 40 year old or every I I know all the races I ran and, and I can talk about many of them but I ended up running um, sub 30 minutes for um, uh, 10 Ks SA um, uh, um, 10k chance, which was uh, 29.56. I ran um, a 221 marathon, 221.50, which I won. I won that as a veteran, and I, uh, I won a 10k as a veteran that year. And then I ran uh, 46.03 as a as a on 15k. And then a half marathon around 66.13. So I can't talk about, I did all that when I was 40. Now I can't talk about every one of those races, but I'd love to talk about every one of those races. But um, in the meantime, um, when I, I ended up, I was being coached by a bloke called Tom Pickett, who's back here in England now. Now he, when he left Germiston, He'd, he'd asked me would I take the group over, the group who I trained with. So I took that group over and I started coaching on his philosophies. What I learned off of him, um, I'd, I'd never be uh, as knowledgeable as him about coaching, but I, I enjoyed the coaching and I did learn a lot off of him. And, and, that, that, and I took that over at the age of probably 30, probably... Probably about 40, when I was 40, 42, just before I went to Cape Town, just before we moved to Cape Town. And we had a big group up there of guys running um, three, three, uh, 340, uh, uh, one sub 150, or 151 for 800 metres. And I could only stuff the group up, you know, for what he had. There, what he'd made, I could only stuff it up. So um, I, I coached that lot until, as well as myself, and during that time, I'd also won six times cross country. I'd won from 35 age group to uh, until I was 40, 42. I'd won six times cross country in my age group. So it was separate races anyway. So. I was proud of that. I was, I'm still proud of what I've done there, and and um, so I took up the coaching, as well as running, which, uh, um, and and then I ended up. We we went to Cape Town. Vicky got a job to go to Cape Town. We went to Cape Town, and I started coaching there as well. But I my running from the age of about I must have been 45 then, 44 years old, and then my running was. I wasn't. I wasn't getting any faster. I was running my ten k's and thirty one instead of sub sub. You know, so sub thirty one. I was running eight eight k's instead of um, my best eight k's was twenty three fifty. But instead of um, running my eight k's in, in sub twenty five, it was. I still run. I think one or two under twenty five. But I was definitely getting slower. I was enjoying the coaching, started to enjoy the coaching better. And then we ended up with a huge group in, in Cape Town. Of um, We ended up with 15 provincial athletes running across country. Um, oh, I, I, I could sit here all night to talk about the, the coaching in Cape Town. And then I moved back to England. In two, uh, and I, well, during that time I'd run all together uh, from the age of 40 till I was 43, 40, 42. In two years, I'd run 169 uh, races. I'd run 169 races, sometimes three a week I'd run. Anything from a track race to, uh, to a marathon. But I tried to keep it as short as possible. And uh, I'd, ran about, I'd won about 162, 163. And I'd come second or third in the others. So I had a good innings when I was 40 and and, um, and, and then I um, went to Cape Town as I say, then from Cape Town I was still winning races down there uh, as a 40 year old and then I turned 50 and, and uh, 
I was still was winning races. My last one, I won the marathon champs when I was 50. And then we had the two oceans, which is a 56k race. And it wasn't a good time. I struggled, 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 but I still won. Um, I come first for my age group, which I won a lot, quite a bit of money. And I can remember Debbie, my, my daughter, shouting out, come on, Dad, you know, you can do it. I was hurting. My, that was my last ultra. I was hurting so much, but she kept on saying another um, another tyre for the Land Rover because I was I think he was moving back to England, and then um, I was going to come back in a Land Rover, but she wouldn't give me any more money to buy uh, tyres. We, we spent too much. I spent too much on this Land Rover, so she uh, so the money I'd win would be a tyre. So I, I was thinking maybe I could be in the first three, there's four. Uh, but um, I ended up winning it, winning, winning my age group. But I caught the guy with 800 meters to go, and my daughter was shouting, "Come on, Dad! More, more money for the Land Rover! More money for the Land Rover!" So I, I went from about fifth or sixth up, to, and I won it. I, I overtook the guy just as we we're coming in, about 800 meters to go. I couldn't believe I, I caught this guy, and that was my last ultra. That, that was it. So then. Uh, we came, Vicky came back to England and then I came back and I, and I still wanted to keep coaching and then I started coaching uh, in Cleveland, started getting guys and then um, started getting all the old guys I used to run with, got them out running and we started running, I uh, started coaching some of the guys in, in Cleveland and then I, uh, um, Chris Millard asked me, who, who started a, a junior club, to ask me would I help uh, in with the juniors and, uh, and I've been helping the juniors from the age of about nine to way up to seniors now but we started a small small group of, of juniors uh, uh, in sports hall stuff and, um, and, and uh, also we, you know, I, I take the insurance group, he takes the um, he did, he'd take the sprint group and now we've got other coaches joined us, really good coach, coaches joined us and uh, I really enjoy that, you know, I enjoy the, the coaching, the youngsters, seeing them how they're, how they're going and, and, and I've learned a lot from the coaching, uh, uh, from coaching the youngsters and I ended up going to, I went to Loughborough and got my level three coaching uh, certificate. Uh, so, because you can may have done it yourself, you may have been able to be a good runner yourself, but you might not be able to be a good coach. So, and I didn't want people to say, well, you know, I haven't got any coaching certificates. So I went and got it, and I learned a lot enough to I learned a lot on that level three, and um, how to how, not just the training programs. We didn't do any training programs or anything. All we did was was how to, how to listen and talk to people, how to coach, you know. So um, we, I did that and now we, we started off with about maybe 15, 15 people uh, in uh, 15 insurance. Now we got probably, probably about 80 people in, in the, with the kids, 80 kids. Uh, uh, and, and I really enjoy that. But I have learned a lot over the years. I've learned a lot about keep it simple. Keep Keep the running simple. Don't get too complicated. Progress slowly. Uh, don't overdo it. Don't have too much intensity and too much, um, uh, too much endurance. Uh, too many miles too soon. Patience. Uh, and and, and uh, you know, obviously, have focus, have, have patience, and be disciplined. You know, if you're not disciplined with the running, and and I know what I've learned. I 220 marathon is okay, sub 30 is okay, it's not world championship, it's, it's pretty good, it's, and it's not bad, but it ain't brilliant, you know, it's not, you know, I'm not, no, I was never a great, great runner when it came to uh, being um, up with that standard, but I've learned a lot of it, out of it, and I, and I've, and I enjoy the coaching more now, and, and like I say, the philosophy is, is uh, t to take things easy, build up slowly and I've seen people do some wonderful things. I've seen people who, 
who don't believe that, that, and also myself, I've seen people who don't believe what they can do, you know, what they can do if they try and they train and they persevere and, and take the good times with the bad times and they keep training, keep at it, not give in, believe in themselves. I've seen it, I've seen, like I said, I've seen people do some wonderful things.